Hi guys and welcome to RC Shim to another update from my hunger and today I have a lot of topics the first being behind me the further upgrade of my studio with this nice backdrop check out UAV graphics uh, they make some nice landing pads for multi rotors so it's a really nice quality material it has uh, enhanced edges where you have packs to secure the pad in the grass. I hope you like the design. I did it together with uh, Nick from UAV Graphics. It was really just a few mails between us uh, to come up with a nice design. He really works fast and efficient and he prints you your own designs if you, if you desire. Or you can buy, if you're a fan of RC Shim, you can buy one of these or he has, he has uh, many other nice designs, so check, check their site out, really nice. The other points regarding my studio, uh, last week I got a comment about my sound and that I have echo in my studio and that was because I use Rode VideoMic directly on my cam and this is a directional uh, microphone and if you have it on the camera and the camera face is directly to me and behind me is a wall then you will uh, the mic will record uh, my my voice and also the reflection on the wall so that gave me some nasty echo so what i came up with now is the zoom H1 video mic and I mounted it hanging over my head and for today I'll leave it in, in the frame on purpose so you see where it's positioned and if it's sitting up there it really records the sound in, in perfect quality uh, I hope you hear the difference and I don't have to wear any any clip-on mics and I didn't like the quality I, I tested a few lavalier mix but they had some background noise and I didn't like that. It's a really nice device, um, can show you more in a separate video if you're really curious. It's just like uh, a little sound recording device where you can uh, adjust the level of recording. You have different quality, uh, sound qualities. I record now in MP3 320 kilobit, which is really high and I tested it with good uh, earphones and it really sounds nice to me. So that's a great tip, thanks to uh, Marcio, I so I really enjoy this. Yeah, and the other upgrade is a LED light on the cam. Just gonna make a quick, quick video with my mobile phone to show you the light and the setup here. Next point on my list is the ArcBird Antenna Tracker and their OSD, which is also an uh, autopilot. So for the ArcBird, the unboxing is easy. I want to thank Sotrick. Uh, Sotrick uh, commented on my, on my Antenna Tracker video I did a few weeks ago, a few months ago, that he is really happy with his ArcBird AAT antenna tracker and I see now why he is so happy about it it really comes pre-built you have this big box where all the tech stuff is in you just have three buttons and I really love the build quality uh, it has one big endless spinning servo with contacts going to the ground here and getting power and delivering video and video will then go to your goggles or your monitor it has a um, big metal plate up here which is uh, let's say six by five centimeters and here I will be placing the receiver the video receiver maybe 2.4 2.4 gigahertz video receiver and the antenna attached to it so I don't have any loss because I use extension cables, as somebody also recommended. It's XT60 power cable, really nice and uh, strong video cable. 
plug in this box and then it will go up to your video receiver and the nice thing it has the uh, I suppose 12 volt power or whatever you feed in here it has the power and audio and video which go into the receiver you have the power cord on the base to a big fat uh, XT60 uh, LiPo, I'd say 3 to 5000 milliamps. So you can have a GPS device also here on the tracker itself, so it knows its uh, home coordinates initially. And it's also useful if you plan to move your ground station for whatever reasons. Um, so the antenna tracker will know his position and the position of the plane because the coordinates get sent down. So he can always point in the right direction. That may be applicable uh, if you plan to uh, mount the tracker box with the suction cups here on the roof of your car, drive around and have the antenna tracker always track your plane. Yeah, that's some very advanced stuff. You also get an, I think, firmware upgrade thingy here. And you get this uh, air module. You have to mount this in the plane or copter or whatever. Uh, because if I didn't get it wrong, uh, this device doesn't only use the audio channel for telemetry transmission, it also encodes its telemetry data in the video stream. So you have uh, both ways and more security. So this is the antenna tracker. Um, it will probably take a few weeks to months until I actually use it. Uh, it depends on the weather and how I can continue with my next project I'll show you soon. The Arcbird OSD. And it's not only an OSD, it's also an return to home capable autopilot with a lot of sensors in it. I'm really curious to see how this thing works. Uh, shout out to uh, 7 Demo 7. Jeff already flies with it, and as he told me so far, he's quite happy with it. So, it has a lot of features built in, uh, also a lot of cables, you know the stuff. There is the power sensor, and I love that everybody is going to XT60 plugs now. And here you have the GPS antenna which comes in a nice plastic case and I will show you next where this thing is used so big shout out shout outs to April from Arcbird for sending me this stuff this will be the home for the Arcbird OSD and the target for the Arcbird antenna tracker it's the XUAV1 Banggood Banggood was nice enough to send me this model. It comes as, it, as you see it here. The fuselage is completed. You have to attach, you have to mount your own servos and linkage. Of course all the electronics. The unique thing about this, the folding prop mounted on a, on a ring on the back boom so it will be in a perfect position for flying. Because on the Pixlr type planes or the Easy Star, you have a dome with the prop up there, and that has a different angle of attack. And it also has the problem that you can only mount smaller, smaller props. So for pusher planes, it's a good idea to have a big prop spinning around the boom. Or the other version, you have two booms and yeah, a space in the middle. One issue that uh, a few people found is that it has a gearbox system and this is noisy, the gearbox is noisy and you lose some some efficiency here. So we will see how this works. There have also been some guys uh, inventing a belt driven system. It's wooden re reinforced in the inside. You have carbon spars going to the wing. You can insert the battery nice. You can insert very large batteries. It's also reinforced with the carbon spar on the bottom. You have a cable tray up here running to the back of all your electronics. So you will mount the maybe even the GPS antenna inside there. 
uh, I will see this. You can mount all the, your electronics here and have it easily accessible. That's a nice plus. So the nose is another nice feature of this thingy. So you have this plastic nose here, which houses this camera dome, which is yeah, the camera gimbal, but on normal servers, not, not a brushless gimbal. Uh, you have one server for tilting, yeah, inside the this thing is a second servo for looking around. So, yeah, you can tilt up and down and look sideways, I guess. But I have to figure out how this will work. Uh, as with the antenna tracker and the OSD, uh, I think this will take a few weeks until I finish this. I mean, this is meant to mount the the FPV cam, the board camera inside, not an HD cam. So for looking around and panning around and enjoying the scenery while you fly, you have the FPV camera in the gimbal here in the front and you mount your GoPro, Mobius, whatever on the wing, on top or hanging on the bottom. Yeah, we will we will see where where the best place for the for the HD cam is. They also supply you with the normal styrofoam nose. They want you to put the styrofoam inside this down here. The styrofoam just fills up the thing in the front and then you have space for a flat cam or for a GoPro up on top. Not so sure about this. I will try the gimbal mount of course because that's one of the nice features. <laughs> the supplier with a pair of these, so upon throwing you don't cut your fingers. The rear end of the plane will look like this. It's a V-tail and will just be screwed or glued, I'm not sure about this, on the rear side. I bought the Foxy Legend from surveilzone.com. I also shopped FPV cam that has a really large uh, voltage ran range, 5 to 22 volts, that's really nice, 2.8 millimeter lens and it has 600 TV lines. I'm gonna try this and see if it is better than the Fat Shark 600 TV lines. And I also shopped there for the cam for the uh, this thing caught my attention because it is so small. In combination with the GPS sensor it has 15 grams. Uh, you don't have to configure anything on this. You just plug in the GPS and you have to cable uh, your video. Uh, the output of your video camera goes in and then this cable goes to the video transmitter. So of course it must be uh, cabled in the video signal let's say 12 volts, but it can handle 7 to 16 volts or something like that to power up. And you can configure it with one button that's on the back. And it almost looks identical to the iOSD Mini that I love from DJI. But this, as I told you, doesn't need a NASA behind it. It has its own GPS and it also has its own, I think, barometer and uh, sensors. So you will see an artificial horizon, you will see the height, the distance, the voltage of your battery. You will not see the, the amps that you drew, but in, in many cases the voltage is enough for you as an indicator how, how empty your battery is. So that's really a nice and easy to set up OSD for the mini quads. I'm gonna install this yeah, maybe on my Snapper Mini soon. So I just wanted to show you this. Yeah, the price tag is uh, around $50, which is really nice for the features. Finally, I wanted to uh, give some shout out to Hava82, an FPV friend of mine from Vienna. He was one of the first being kind enough to film a short introduction video of him and his channel and his planes. And I want to start off with Hova in this uh, FPVs introduction. 
Hello, my nickname is Hoover82. I have a YouTube channel about FPV flying. I fly a right wing Safe 2, which is perfect for long ranges, mountain diving, and all the stuff. I also fly a Happy Flyers Wipeout. It's a small version of the Sapphire 2. I use 2.4 gig for the video link. My YouTube channel is also about mini quads and racing. As a ground station I have a pepper box 2.4 gig from IB Crazy, which is perfect for long ranges and give me a perfect video. Greetings to Arthur Shim and his viewers. Thanks. I also want to encourage you to subscribe to Hover because he has a nice channel and uh, check out his latest video with an epic mountain rescue operation. Uh, it might be interesting to view his other videos first. So check out his three last videos because they were all filmed on the same location and the third of course ended in a Epic Rescue, which was filmed nicely and uh, they did some effort into it. So check this out. Okay, so thanks for watching my update. I had a lot of points on my list today. Hope it wasn't too boring. Hope it wasn't too slow. If you have some feedback, just leave me some comments. I always like to discuss my work and my hobby with you. Hope you liked it. Bye.